G'day. Some people, me included, uh, were a bit worried when I made the, uh, the wire screwdriver racks, uh, thinking, well, how am I going to anchor that down? And so after a bit of head scratching, um, I made up some more wire work. And so this is the, uh, the story of that, along with a bit of information about uh, resistance welding, uh, spot welding and, and cross wire welding, which is the, the main thing that I use to uh, put this together. So uh, I hope it's interesting. We'll see you at the end. So this is typical of a, uh, a home spot, spot welder, um, resistance welder. Is the, is the correct title for them. This one's made by Dorman, plugs into a 15 amp power point and uh, it does its thing. Now, the important part is probably this, the electrodes. And what you're trying to do there is bring the current in both sides and then have it meet at a little spot. Okay. Uh, I have various electrodes that I've made up. There's these ones here which are are cranked and the idea of those was to be able to put a, uh, an elect uh, a, a spot right up against a, a corner. This particular setup here with a, with a long top one and a short bottom one was for getting into a box. Um, there's a couple here with, with uh, reduced bits there to uh, get into another tight spot and uh, then I've got these ones here with a flat top on them which I'll get to in a moment. The important part about using a welder, particularly one as small as this, is that the, the, co the current has to be concentrated in a spot. Okay, and so that's why these electrodes taper down. Um, they are there just to, to um, get to a spot. The way they are used is you put your material in there and you clamp it. And the clamping pressure is important too for reasons I'll explain explain. You apply some current and everything's wonderful. If you see sparks coming out you're doing it wrong because the, the um, that's molten metal that's coming out. You should always be wearing safety glasses for, for doing something like this. And then it's just a matter of pulling on the trigger and uh, it's, it can get quite hot. And there you have a spot weld. Um, pretty much any metal can be spot welded. It relies on the, on the surface resistance of the metal. So that's just a bit of um, plain steel. Um, here's a little bit of uh, stainless and I'll, I'll do that as well. One of the key things with using different metals like this is that different metals have di different characteristics and so with the plain steel I just gave it a, uh, a spot. With the stainless I'm actually going to give it a Two. I see the, the, the sparks escaping then, um, meant that that isn't quite right, so I don't know what the story is there. No, well, seems to have taken. Uh, it may have just been a, the, the edge there not being deburred properly and, and uh, having gone. Clamp a, a, a test specimen in a vise. And then you try and peel the, the weld apart. Now, So the standard test for how good a, a, a spot weld is, is um, a peel test and we do that um, by peeling the two parts of metal apart once they've been welded and that gives you a, a measure of, of how successful the weld is and here's the, here's the mild steel piece uh, and you can see that I've, I've managed to pull a hole in the metal so if the weld is stronger than the surrounding metal. Similarly for the stainless steel piece, I've managed to pull what we call a nugget out of the 
out of the one side of the, the joint. So you could say that these two worlds are pretty good worlds. What you then do is you basically have to repeat that. Um, this is one of those processes where the only way of testing whether something is any good is destructively and so therefore you have to do a destructive test like this and then based on that you say right well that worked I now need to do the same thing I did for the, for the test piece for a good piece. What you're doing is basically this you've got two bits of metal sandwiched between your two electrodes and in a highly enlarged version of that the current is flowing through the electrodes ideally the resistance between well the, the way it works is the resistance here is the is higher than the resistance here and here and industrially you you cool these electrodes down and all sorts of things here we've just got to rely on um, the resistance to, between copper and steel being less than the resistance between steel and steel but the current flows through there the, the combination of the pressure and the current is enough to form a molten pool and that's the nugget that uh, you then pull out uh, when you're doing your destructive tests. There is another sort of welding you can do with these welding units and it's referred to uh, industrially as cross wire welding. I've made up a little jig here which is just basically holds the wires in place but these are a couple of bits of scrap stainer star steel but what you can see there is the wires are you know held I then clamp those between my electrodes and I give it a burst of current and there's my cross wire weld now once again it's a destructive test thing and that one's not quite good enough but what you're doing is, is basically squashing the material away and um, because of the uh, circular profile and the circular profile there there's very high resistance at the crossover point and so therefore it's a natural for um, resistance welding. There's another go with that uh, those bits of wire so there's the old joint there uh, as you can see or you might be able to see there's a lot more penetration there so that is a lot stronger. Spurred on by this project I did get round to finishing my bending jig for um, 3.4 wire uh, so there it is nothing terribly special. The way it's used I've put a mark on there to give me 110 from the end there I'm going to position that right on that um, pin like so and then it just becomes a matter of bending it like so. Bit of judgment until you work out what, what 90 degrees looks like. It's not too bad, it can be straightened a little bit. But that's that's the whole idea behind it. It gives you a nice neat uh, bend. There's a little bit of, of over bend there, but I'll straighten that out when I when I bring that back got to watch spring back on these. Because I know how far that is from my mark uh, I can now do a little bit of a rough calculation and work out if I want to get that um, 350 long how much I need to step back from that. Once I've done that I'll then assemble a, a square frame, uh, weld the ends together, start putting my wires on. I'm about halfway along and, and a couple of things to note. Firstly, if you apply too much pressure what will happen is the molten material will just go and so I'm going to have to grind that off, put a new one on there. Um, this is probably more like what it should look like. Uh, sunk about halfway in, any more than that and you're, you start getting into trouble with, uh, with this sort of thing. I've been lucky here. The other thing you may notice too is that if we look along the edge there um, there's a slight bend in that and that's part of the welding process that'll have to be straightened out. When welding these wires on you purposely leave them a little bit longer than you need and then you can come back and you can you can uh, you know trim them up flush with the uh, the wire so I'm going to get all these on then I'm going to trim these back and then I'm going to be looking at mounting the uh, the cross pieces. So this is where we are so far like a uh, slightly missing cake stand 
okay crack but that's that's what what I need I've gone along and trimmed these up with the angle grinder and then uh, just um, gone over the wire wheel uh, clean them up take off a couple of the burrs and all that sort of thing looks quite quite good um, so the next thing will be to put the the, the cross pieces on I've now put all the uh, the cross pieces on similar sort of technique to, to putting the wires on uh, a couple of longer pieces here to, to, to bridge awkward gaps and I'll trim those off with the Dremel uh, I don't think I can get in there with the, um, the angle grinder did have a couple of uh, um, problems one of them was that the trigger on the, the welder stuck on and so you might just be able to pick that up it basically fused right through so I'm going to have to go back with the TIG welder and just patch that up a little bit and I'll probably put a, a drop or two of TIG elsewhere um, but uh, apart from that it's it's quite a nice little solid thing it sits down except for a little bit of wire brushing here and there complete done patched up uh, an interesting little way of using um, cross wire welding but very effective so uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.